Welcome back to the BLM postmodernist question. Should we divest our libraries of all those books which smack of the so-called Western canon? In other words, should we, quote, decolonialize our bookshelves? Now, before I go on to answer that question, at least in part today, I'd like to point out a distinction by the Western canon as consisting or being comprised of those books which in the past were known more by the politically incorrect language as masterworks or the immortal classics which have uh, graced our, our, sh our shelves for thousands of years going back to uh, as, as far back as Homer and running through the line through Hesiod and Herodotus and uh, Virgil uh, into the Middle Ages of, of, the, of the European experience, into early modern European literature, etc., culminating in, um, in 19th and 20th century great works. The distinction I'm talking about is that there is a distinction between those immortal classics which make up the Western canon and those books which aren't necessarily considered the immortal classics, but which also have a niche within the Western canon because they have appeared consistently in college and in some cases high school anthologies for at least the past 80 years. So I will include those as well, which uh, would include uh, essays, critical works, works of a literary, social, and cultural um, type caliber. And that brings me to today's work, which you will not have read in high school or college necessarily, but it's still part of what we call the Western canon, at least in spirit, because it embodies the values and the erudition and other attributes which we say go into the formation of the Western canon. Now, the work to which I am referring is that History of Criticism and Literary Tastes in Europe by George Saintsbury. It came out between 1900 and 1904. And once again, I'm going to read directly verbatim, quoting verbatim from Heim Haydn's work of the Saris of Book Digests. Quote, Saintsbury, the most eminent of modern English literary critics, established his reputation with a history of criticism and literary taste in Europe in three volumes. It is a work full of solid scholarship, so remarkably well organized that it has served as a textbook on the history of literary criticism for a number of decades in the universities of English-speaking countries. Saintsbury avoids any long discussion of what he described as slightly abstruse subjects, that is, transcendental aesthetics, theories of beauty, and any psychological analysis of artistic pleasure. He avoids generalizations and tries so far as it is possible to confine his analysis to the particular and the actual, stating his theory of criticism with brevity. Quote, the criticism of literature is first of all the criticism of expression as regards the writer, of impression as regards the reader, unquote. Now, that idea of the impression as regards the writer, of course, it is more of a type of an impressionistic literature. And in the Western canon tradition, Walter Pater, 19th century Oxford historian, critic, critic and essayist, best exemplifies. He could be called the father of modern impressionistic writing, meaning that the the writer attempts to convey to his or her audience their impression of things. Reality as filtered through their own perceptions. Now this idea of impression as regards the reader, so we have a, a dynamic going, uh, which in later 20th century criticism back when I was uh, an undergrad in the early 80s, 
what's known as transactional analysis. That is, or a transactional relationship. There is a relationship between the writer and the reader. In other words, the text is never neutral. We come to it with our own presuppositions, prejudices, uh, and other things that set us apart from other individuals within the framework of our own life's experiences. So remember that, please. This idea of works being impressionistic as we continue to entertain the question, should we decolonialize or not our bookshelves? Thank you. And the next time we meet um, again, we'll be at a different United States uh, campus. So, uh, college campus. So once again, thank you for having joined me for this past week at Harvard. And uh, as we pursue this question, which has been posed by the postmodernist groups in general, but in, more in particular lately by BLM, what are we going to do with the so-called imperialistic and uh, racist or racialist literary works, if indeed we judge them to be so. All right, once again, thank you, and I look forward to our next meeting.